Hello, welcome to the Amateur Machine Shop YouTube channel. In this episode, I resume making the tangential lathe tool holders. In part one, I roughed out the steel to make the tool bodies. In part two, the tool bodies were machined to fit the 5 16 high speed steel bits, along with finishing the lengths and milling the notches. Now in part three, I will mill the clamps and as well complete the round bit tool holders. In addition, show my first attempt at hot bluing. As mentioned in part two, drawings for the tool holders are now on the website. Clamps for the two tools are shown in the CAD. I added a small boss on clamp 1 to the drawing. After machining the clamp, I noticed the clamping was crooked, therefore an added boss will remedy it. Clamp 2 is a little more complex to mill. I did it the easy way rather than trying to mill everything perfect before fitting to the tool holder. I started by cutting a small piece of coal roll bar, then move over to the mill to square the block and to machine it to the correct thickness. The clamp for tool 2 is now close to the correct thickness. I left the block larger than required and I will explain why. I wanted to do it in an easier way, that is not having to mill the angles perfectly for the tool bit to locate after having milled the clamp to size. I found it was easier to mill the angle slot first for the 5 16 high speed steel bit and then mill the clamp to final dimensions. This way the clamp is mounted with the tool bit in the holder. If that doesn't make sense, watch how I did it. For checking the depth of the slot, I used a 1 8 gauge block. In the drawings I added a view with a 1 8 pin in the slot with a measurement. This will make measuring the depth of the slot much easier. The half inch carbide end mill is worn on the tips so I chased the slot with a new 3 16 end mill.
Now that the slaughter groove is milled, I can hold the parts together and transfer the screw hole. An automatic center punch is used to deepen the dimple. I am drilling with a 532nd drill bit for a reason. The recommended size of 150 thou for a 1024 UNC thread makes it difficult to tap with some taps. I didn't want to break any taps and a little larger diameter makes it easier. There's still plenty of thread for the screw. The trick with these taps is to turn a little and then turn a little back, essentially clearing or breaking the chip formed. It can be frustrating and easy to break a tap if turned too far. Even when backing out the tap, it can get tight and snap. Experience is gained quickly here by breaking a few taps. With the threaded hole in the clamp, the holder, the high speed steel bit and the clamp can be assembled. This is where this gets easier than milling the clamp to the exact size prior. Now I can scribe the lines and use the existing holder as my reference for milling the clamp to its final size. For the side chamfers on the tool and clamp, I decided to just grind them. The chamfers are clearance and not critical, so I spend the time setting up to mill the chamfers. Chances are I will regrind them to fit a future machining application. I am using a 4x36 inch belt grinder combo. Using a fine grit sanding belt for steel, I try to grind out the tool marks. It would be much easier if I had a surface grinder. A while back I found a video on YouTube that covered hot bluing by My Mechanics. I thought these two holders would be a great part to try it on. I will add the link to the video description. I have some more footage coming in a future video of more parts that I heat blued. Using some 320 grit sandpaper, the tool holder and clamp are both sanded. 
If you watch the video by My Mechanics, he shows the outcome of a sanded part versus a polished part. There is no need to get carried away with too much sanding to get a decent result. Using a burner from a small coffee can type forge I made provides a lot of heat and didn't take long for the parts to turn in color. The temperature recommended was anywhere from 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. The color could be controlled if the heat would be applied uniformly. and some future experimenting I will attempt that. If you have ever seen a clockmaker blue parts, it is a very appealing color. I wiped off the canola oil from the parts and the brick residue that rubbed off a little while moving the holders. At least the bluing will slow down the rust from forming. Overall the parts look pretty good. You can see the color difference between the clamp and the tool holder. Controlling the heat will be something to learn to manage with different size parts. It took very much the same approach to making the clamp for tool 1 as previously shown on the clamp for tool 2. The block was set and secured at a 16 degree angle. I proceeded by milling the end angle and then the slot that is 50 thou in depth.
Moving on to the two round bit tool holders. The remaining machining to be done are the threads and the holes for the bits. Fairly easy tasks to complete. I start off by edge finding a bottom corner, then center drilling, followed by a 532nd drill bit. Since I have the part in the vise and lined up with the spindle, it is a good time to start the thread with the tap. The tap will be straight and be in line with the tool. Tapping by hand can sometimes cause the tap to thread at an angle and makes it difficult to thread in the screws. Having a few threads cut while set up will ensure the tap will stay straight when finishing the tapping by hand. You may have noticed I'm drilling and tapping from the opposite end of where the screw will be. The reason for this is that it is much easier to tap from this end. Tapping from the other side would require a long drill and a pulley tap or an extension to reach over the tool body distance. With the tap installed in the chuck, in order to be able to turn the spindle easily, I removed the belt from the spindle, now I can easily rotate the spindle by hand. While slowly turning the spindle, I place light pressure on the quill handle so the tap can bite into the steel and start the tapping process. As chips start to form and the tap gets tight, I back off the tap by turning it in reverse, then tap a little more, repeating the process. Be careful not to turn too much as you cannot feel the tap get tight as easily as by tapping by hand. The next holder is now set up and the same order of procedures are applied. I use a small square to mount the holder vertically. This is where a third hand would come in handy. Finally getting to the round tool holders, here I use my protractor to set the tool holder at 16 degrees. Then place the 1 8 end mill into the chuck and very carefully spot face the surface for a center drill. I may have been able just to use a center drill but didn't want to risk the hole being pushed to one side. I eyeballed the location so that a small amount of material would remain for the round bit. This way a sharp edge isn't created and adds a little more support for the bit. I currently do not have 1 8 or quarter inch reamers so I decided to use the right size drill bits. The fit is snug enough as long as the drill bit doesn't cut oversize, also ensure it's sharp and ground perfectly. For the quarter inch holder, I used a shank to eyeball the location of the hole. Again, allowing a small amount of material to add support and not to create a sharp edge. This time I did center drill and not spot face, feeding very gently. Then followed with a new quarter inch drill bit and drilled through.
That completes the four holders for now. I will add chamfers and hot pulling in the near future. I have tried the tooling on my mini lathe. I was trying to push it a little by taking heavier cuts and the lathe keeps blowing a lot of fuses. I think I found out why and I will explain in a future video when I can reveal the fix and show the tool holders in action. I hope you enjoyed watching the three part videos on the tool holders. The drawings are on the website for free download. Feel free to create your own unique holders for the bits you want to use. There are no limits as to what you can create with the design. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing and like the video. Thanks for watching.